Happy Thursday out there, Team 42. It's your skipper here, Darius Dell, to present our Macro Minute for Thursday, March 21st, 2024. As always, we'll start with the executive summary from today's lead-off morning note. If you'd like to review the analysis supporting these conclusions, as well as what to specifically do about them in your portfolio, you need to be a client of 42 Macro. So uh, today's key macro event is Dove's Central Banks plus incremental evidence of green shoots globally equals ample upside risk, and barring the word ample from uh, J Chair Powell's uh, uh, presser yesterday. So uh, the nuance there is yesterday the FOMC signaled to investors that it is comfortable cutting rates and slowing balance sheet runoff into a higher nominal GDP environment, effectively kowtowing to fiscal dominance. Elsewhere, the preliminary batch of March composite PMI data from around the world were generally supportive of our green shoots globally theme. Elsewhere, the Swiss National Bank surprised economists and front ran the Fed, ECB, and Bank of England with its first 25 basis point rate cut. And lastly, the BCB uh, uh, cut its benchmark sell rate by another 50 basis points yesterday evening. Uh, the Brazil Central Bank has implemented 300 basis points of rate cuts since it began its monetary easing cycle in August of last year. In terms of market implications, on uh, last Saturday's Around the Horn presentation, we concluded the Fed has been adamant that their 2% inflation target has not changed but implicit in every risk asset valuation is the assumption that the Fed will not sacrifice the economic expansion just to get inflation from 3% to 2%. That is structurally bullish for stocks, credit, crypto, and commodities, and structurally bearish for the U.S. dollar and Treasury bonds. No change to that view. Transitioning to uh, our 42 macro dashboard, as always, we'll uh, wrap up with a question from our uh, Global Team 42 community of investors. Uh, so the question reads, uh, it's about global liquidity. It reads, hi, Darius. Uh, first off, I just want to say thank you for all the hard work you put in. I hate to admit it, but I fell into the bear porn trap throughout all of last year and have been completely sidelined in this rally. So hoping how to, uh, so hoping to learn how to trade what the markets are doing, not what they, I think they should be doing. Reading, reading the question obviously verbatim here. Uh, you mentioned a few times that you, we are likely to see an inflection point in global liquidity sometime mid-year. From a U.S. perspective, that makes sense if inflation fears materialize. But what makes you think other liquidity drivers, especially China, uh, reverse their liquidity injections around that time? So uh, the first thing I'll say is uh, thanks for the, the kind uh, feedback. Uh, you know, we've certainly done our, our part in, turn, in terms of helping uh, keep our clients on the right side of market risk for the past, you know, better part of the past, you know, 15 months or so in terms of this raging uh, Montauk bull market. Uh, so uh, in terms of, uh, the, you know, just kind of thinking about this from an a, a emotional and intellectual standpoint, you know, it doesn't matter what has happened to your portfolio to get to this point, no matter if you made a lot of money or lost a lot of money. The only thing that matters is what you do today to right side your portfolio uh, in, in, to get your portfolio on the right side of market risk. That, that's it. You know, every day is the, the best day ever to to improve, you know, your positioning in your portfolio. And so uh, don't 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 think of it like as a sunk cost fallacy and you know, all this other stuff, behavioral uh, uh, biases and heuristics that, you know, the average investor tends to succumb to. And this is why financial markets operate the way they do. So uh, that's the one thing I'll say about that is that, you know, you know, clap your hands, move forward and to start focusing on what you can do uh, to get your portfolio right size for the current market regime, the current impending uh, market regimes. So uh, getting into the second half of the question, specifically on liquidity. So uh, we've been uh, pretty vocal about our expectation that uh, inflation uh, bottoms at an unpalatable level uh, sometime later this year, likely in uh, Q3 or maybe early Q4. Uh, that's our current expectation that could change based on the evolution of the data and how that those data feed into our, our now cast frameworks. Uh, but that, that's that's where we are there. So from that from the U.S. perspective, you know, U.S. liquidity has been been lower, uh, been trending lower. Uh, but it may slow the rate of trading lower over the kind of um, you know medium term, uh, just given the fact that the Fed may slow balance sheet runoff, uh, and then we may uh, you know and, and so so U.S. liquidity has been U.S. liquidity has been trading higher from the perspective of our net liquidity model, but broad the U.S. broader liquidity proxy, which adds in the Fed's balance sheet, um, uh, has been been trending lower. And so, in respect to China, uh, we 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 do believe that China will see some benefit to the lagged uh, impact of its monetary uh, easing dynamics that we've uh, we've you know accurately forecasted uh, and continue to benefit from in terms of uh, in terms of the uptrend in global liquidity. Uh, we expect that by you know by mid to late Q2, it'll be pretty obvious that they have you know some better trends. A lot of a lot of their economic data. We're already starting to see it, by the way. And so it may be the case that rather than stepping on the brakes, the PBOC just eases its foot off the gas pedal a little bit. And if the EPPOC eases its foot off the gas pedal a little bit, you know, China's been the dominant driver of the uptrend of the, the current uptrend in global liquidity. <clears throat> so if they ease their foot off the gas pedal a little bit uh, in response to seeing slightly better data, uh, that could obviously uh, be overwhelmed. That could cause the China positive China liquidity impulse 
to be overwhelmed by the negative liquidity impulses that we're observing across most of the major uh, developed economies. So, you know, it, it's a it's a precarious situation. Um, you know, we still think, you know, the 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 the, the risk uh, to asset markets is skewed higher over the short to medium term. Um, and that's obviously uh, part and parcel with the current risk on market regime uh, that we are uh, that we are in. We suspect the risk on market regime has legs for another one, maybe two quarters. Uh, and then by at the end of that, that rainbow, we'll probably start to see uh, some negative developments on, on the inflation and liquidity side, both domestically uh, and globally. But again, that's that's, you know, that's a that, that could be one or two quarters away. And obviously, if you think about the last one or two quarters of market risk, um, not, not things things can move pretty, pretty far, pretty fast. So I just want to make sure you're staying on the right side of that and not try to uh, front run uh, the changes in our quantitative risk management signals too much. So uh, with that, we'll wrap it up there. Jerry Steele presenting our uh, macro minute for Thursday, March 21st. 2024. Everyone have a wonderful day out there. Best of luck. Uh, and I will see you back here next Tuesday, actually. So I'm going to be offline on Friday and offline on Monday. So the next macro minute you guys will get from us uh, is on, on Tuesday. And uh, uh, Around the Horn subscribers, uh, we're going to put out our Around the Horn uh, this afternoon uh, rather than on Saturday, uh, just from a scheduling conflict perspective. So uh, just be aware of that and be on the lookout for that. And uh, we'll wrap it up there. Everyone have a great day. Cheers.